watch this. Pretend there's a ground like this. This is a map for a ground kind of color variation. Or any kind of thing you can think of, like pattern. Need it. <laughs> I love it. Okay, how's everybody doing? So this is going to be the blackberry bush tutorial. And uh, like I say, I've never done it this way before, although I've used these materials. So that's kind of the way it is, right? We just invent things a lot of times as we go. That's the whole point of having a creative uh, spirit. You know, we just mess it around in our mind and then we sit down and we just start putting stuff together and we try it out and see what happens. So let's do that. Let's try it out and see what happens. So here's some polyfiber I found in the bottom of my box. This is probably 15 years old. I had it kicking around. FP178 Green Polyfiber by Woodland Scenics. Okay. Then I'm going to use 12 millimeter static grass. FS625 Dark Green. Okay. And then I'm just going to start with a little chunk like this. This is should be enough to cover this whole parchment paper. That's the idea, right? You don't need much of this polyfiber. And the trick is, is to spread this stuff out as far as you can. Never use it like this and then put foam on it. That's a mistake that a lot of people do. They just crown this onto a stick, right? And then sprinkle foam on and then, you know, but that's not how you use this, right? You want to stretch it out like this so that it's got that branchy, you know, with blackberries, like if you've been in it, you, you won't forget it because you'll come out shredded bleeding and shredded but anyway so that's what i'm going to do and then i'm going to use nails just some some basic uh two inch nails or whatever to just pin it down on each corner or how many sections i have after i just soak this in a bath of glue i'll show you that as well okay and then i have this old yogurt cup and this is 50 percent carpenter's glue and water it's a good you know a nice thick See that? It's like thick milk, cream almost. 50-50 or so. Going to use that to soak this. To get it all soaked and wet and sticky for the static grass, okay? And then, of course, this is parchment paper. You can probably use wax paper as well. I just use parchment because uh, it has uh, a different kind of texture to it. And it's not as greasy. But wax paper will work as well. And then it's mounted on foam, so I can just push nails into it, okay? Okay, so now for the glue bath. So you can see that I've put some nails, just a rehearsal here, right? I'm going to stretch it over this wax paper. And this is like the consistency of the glue that you can see here. Um, I'll just lay it on here. It, uh, you know, there's enough there that it clings and it's just kind of, see that? So about 50-50 yellow carpenter's glue and water. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take this now and I'm going to, I'm just going to throw it into this pail of glue here. Just like that. So it's just a now it's just a mattress, right? Okay. Looks like like uh, one thirty fifth scale camel netting. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is is I'm going to stretch this out. So now that it's all pinned down, you know, we can 
start pulling on it. Oh, I'm going to use all these nails up. Why not? Put one there and one there like that. There, so now i got a nice cobweb pattern. Okay. Give it a little bit of... A little bit of water just to connect like with water like to all the nails like to help create a nice static elect static electricity field and then here's our static grass applicator by woodland scenics this is the cheapest one i could find uh, i held off for a long time i got this a while ago it's about i don't know 80 bucks or something it's worth it though it's a good one and uh, it has a nine volt battery you can put in as well so you don't have to have extra cables coming off of it okay so I'm just going to hook onto one of the nails there and turn it on, and then I'm going to just apply static grass. Fairly liberal amount. This will be the first branching layers. You know the little, like the secondary limbs that come off of the vines? earlier this was one of the ones that I really liked the way it went out when it was all gooey mess having fun right but here look watch this it's gonna be a little more like it's gonna pick up a little bit of the paper where you punch the nails through but that's okay Okay. All right, man. I got lots now for the uh, the bottom, the base of the fence there, and, and behind the tree line there. Okay. So I like this. I like. Look at that nice mat. Isn't that nice? Okay, so I'm going to airbrush some of this blackberry bush. So I'm going to airbrush the bottom with dark olive because there's two sides to it, right? And then this is the glue side that I peeled, you know, I peeled it up. Dark olive for shadow. And then the top's going to be red, this red brown with violet. You can make, make the red brown with red and brown. And I added some of this while in there because the blueberry has a sort of reddish like the stems are kind of reddish violet colored so i'm going to turn this over now and then you can see it's more this is the more 3d side this is the flat peeled off of the parchment paper it's flat see and then you can see that this is the top side and you can see all the little hair is sticking up, see, with, that's going to catch all our cilantro leaves in this case. So we're going to paint this red brown. You'll see the color on the paper. Remember how I mentioned with, uh, if you go and look at blackberry, right, like in the early stages, it's got that red purple branch work, like the main stems. There's some green in there too, you know, which is okay. You can leave a little bit. Just you know, remember, don't don't cover the whole thing like solid opaque. You want to let all the other colors work for you too, right? So that looks pretty good. I can live with that. Okay, so just as a final highlight coat, I'm going to use a little bit of this mauve that I mixed up with white. And then I just added, you know, a few drops of purple to it. X16, just a white with purple. A lot of thinner, right? 
So you want to use that to highlight because it's got the same colors in it. So remember how we had the, the shadow is the dark olive, then the uh, mid light is the red brown, and then the highlight is this mauve, okay? So all I'm going to do with this is I already did a little bit already just to see how it looked. I just hold the airbrush way back, like a foot back, and just lightly dust, and it'll catch all those little fibers. Okay? So you still have the red brown in there, but you're going to have the light catching. Okay, so now I got lots of material to work with, as you can see. And uh, what I'm going to do is, is I want to maybe try to build the whole hedge, the whole blackberry hedge, as one big model. Like, let's just say that this is the fence line right here. This is the backdrop back here, like this here is the backdrop. And then we have, you know, the fence a little ways from the backdrop like this. So what I want to do is I want to build a, uh, like sort of, I'll show you in a second here, but we want to build a kind of a, you know, blackberry kind of hedge, like most of the bulk here, but with fronds kind of coming out like this, you know, and then just bulk it up, like build it up. So if there's a side view and this is the fence, then I want it bulked up here and then sort of tapering down, like here's the ground. You know, this big trees in there, right? You know, and then the railway track is right here. So I want to build up some bulk back here roughly and then have some of this kind of creeping out like this, you know. Not right to the track, but you know what I mean? Like that. Okay. And so, like, here's a piece, for example, and I got some pins here. And then what I'm going to do is kind of like this one here, is I'm going to model pieces. Like, I'm going to take this and, and uh, fold it over like that, and then maybe take another piece, like, here's a nice one, see, there. And then I'm going to maybe... Put it like that. Well, that doesn't look too bad. And then I'm going to pin it in place. And I'm just going to pin pin a model like the whole length, like the length of the fence. With like this is the fence right here, okay? And then I'm going to model that this hedge all the way along just have fun creatively okay so you can see i've arranged and pinned down with straight pins into a block of foam over parchment paper along the edge there all the pieces of the blackberry bush made up from polyfiber that's already been painted and what i'm going to do is i'm just going to soak the back meaning back here which will go against the fence, but I'm going to soak all that with diluted matte medium 50-50 so that it glues that back sort of wad together. And then when I get it the way I like it, just a few tweaks here and there, then uh, it should have some rigidness and be complete as one hedge model. Then I'll uh, step into the flocking process. Okay, so here it is. It's dried overnight. It's been shaped now. I pulled all the pins out and it's, you know, it's like it's rigid now, see? But, but soft, but it's, you know, it's all held together. Now I got one hedge. I could weave this up against something because it's flexible. And, uh, or just run it in a straight line or break it into chunks even if I want to, see? That's the idea of modeling foliage, right? That's why I like to do it this way. Okay, so I just wanted to point this out. This is the leafing procedure, kind of the final close on this. And I just wanted to point out a couple of things in terms of scale. So this is 187 scale, HO scale, and uh, Blackberry. 
bush, right? So here's an actual blackberry leaf. You can see the size of it in the palm of my hand. Now here's the palm of a hand of a HO scale figure. You can see that this parsley flakes and even the cilantro leaves is quite a bit too large, I would say. You know, by the time we flock this bush. I mean, this would be okay in O scale maybe or larger, but you know, that's kind of the idea, right? So we want to try to get, you know, some kind of uh, scale look. So what I'm going to do is just uh, when I apply this, I'm just going to crush it up a bit more. So it's a finer. And I can use parsley. I don't need to use cilantro. I mean, parsley is a third of the price, right? It's much cheaper. And it's got a nice green to it. Even even the cilantro, if you're picky about that. But you can always touch that up with the airbrush, right? So that's what I'm going to do. There's no difference here, really, once you crush it and mix it all together. So Okay, so this is the parsley flake application. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use uh, Liquitex Matte Medium Diluted 50-50 with water. And I'm going to spray it on with the airbrush. I think it was James that mentioned uh, a ways back about... Because we talked about this idea with, the, you know, the 3M spray. And that's good, too, when you do in large areas and you want to do quick application than to use the 3M spray and be done with it. But that's not the same in this case, right? I'm doing it differently here for, for obvious reasons. So, uh, I mean, there's the benefit of the, just the environment too, right? Like with the cleanliness and my workspace with water-based products versus toxic, you know, solvent-based glues and things. And besides, you can't handle this stuff after you've sprayed it with the 3M. It mats together, it just wrecks it. So the idea here is if this is the, the polyfiber heads right now, these are the parsley flakes here, right? So we want to glue them on. We're going to wet this surface here with the matte medium. And then after we're done, we want to put a coating of matte medium over top to seal it in. And it'll be nice and flat. That way it won't all flake off like I showed earlier. Okay? So that's what we're going to do. And I'm um, just going to take this airbrush here. Now, when you're using this, don't like don't let this dry in your airbrush. You'll have a tough time getting it out more than Tamiya. I mean, isopropyl alcohol will soak it out eventually, but you know you just don't want to leave paint or any glues in your airbrush uh, anyway. You know. So this is 50/50, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pour some into the cup here. Okay, turned up the pressure a bit. Oh, that's much better. So we're just going to spray this area right here so it's just sort of a, got a milky sheen to it. Okay, and then we're just going to take our ground up parsley flakes and we're going to just drop a little bit on at a time. stinky glue here. Nice clean environment. Okay, so I've got a good sprinkling on there. I don't want to cover it all up, like not too heavy. I want some of that violet branch work to show through, okay? So what I'm going to do is I got another cup load of uh, matte medium 50-50 water here and I'm just going to coat you now spray over top of all the parsley just to seal it in nice. Okay? Isn't that nice? Okay, so now the hedge is ready to peel off the parchment paper, and you'll see uh, the reason why, right? Um, if it was wax paper, it would probably fall off much easier, but, it, but I wanted it to stay in place when I flocked it without the pins holding it in. You can see now that you just lift that. Okay. So there's the blackberry hedge, and it'll look, you'll see it under the better light on the layout when I do a little highlights with the airbrush. But you can see that, um, see there's the underside of it. 
for the map medium. Which can act as a good glue base if you want to glue it in place, but I won't have to in this case. Okay, so here we are on the layout, and as you can see, I've lifted the trees, but I've kept them all on the same sort of position on another piece of foam, safely out of the way, and I've just inserted short bamboo sticks where those tree holes are, okay, because I want to place this blackberry bush hedge in without the trees in the way, so this is where it's going to go, like this, okay. This is why I built it as a model separately on the foam, you see, because I measured it. And so now I can just lay it in place. You see, I don't even have to glue it, right? Everything's wild. And then when I put my trees back in, I'll just pull out each individual stick and then reposition the trees. Actually, it looks pretty good. It's, it doesn't come out too far. And uh, you can see some of the red brown in there. And then I can go in there with the airbrush and I'll just add a tiny little bit of highlighting, a bit of maybe yellow green or something, just to catch the tiny little leaves, just a little bit in a few strategic places. But I'll know that once the trees are in place, because I won't need to do it where the shadow is underneath, really. That looks good, eh? I really like it. Actually, I might not even highlight it. It actually looks pretty good from here. Because there's already pieces within the parsley that uh, are a little bit lighter than the others. And it's really rigid now too, like the uh, parsley flakes will not flake off, see? If you just sprinkle it on to, with a spray glue, uh, you'd have to spray glue coats over top. And I don't like that it has a funny sort of look to it, especially at this scale when you get up close. But the matte medium is dry, flat and rigid, but flexible, see? Okay. Okay, so just a few closing remarks. Um, I just want to say that I'm really pleased with the blackberry bush, the way it turned out. It just looks fantastic. But I really think that a mottled foliage like that, uh, I could have got away with less under their trees because it does get lost a bit. I mean, live it looks really good, but it doesn't seem to photograph well on camera like it did in the previous shot when the trees weren't there. I think that the blackberry bush like that would look fantastic on open ground like, like climbing out of a ditch or something or on a bottom of a hillside or but in the shade you know it gets lost a bit but where I'm standing and looking at it it looks really good but it just doesn't seem to photograph as well when it's in the shade but I'm pretty happy because now I don't have that kind of weed eater type edge fencing there you know like the park caretaker was in there <laughs> you know trimming everything but anyway um yeah, no, I'm really glad. Now, this area is pretty much done, minus a few scattered little details. Like I mentioned, maybe a cat here. Or something. And, you know, just little featurettes of things. Um, but, this, but this whole area is done. This whole midsection and to the left this way is pretty much all done. And then the, just the far end, um, you know, that I'll... I'll be finishing up there, and uh, but it's it's uh, looking pretty good though. I like this scene now. You know, it's, it, it, it finally pops and clicks. Okay, so thanks for uh, following along. I hope you learned something from the tutorial. I know it was a little bit longer than usual, but I really wanted to document all the process because I'm definitely going to model this type of blackberry again because it looks really good. Uh, on open ground and it would look fantastic on an O scale small shelf layout as well okay so thanks again and thanks to all my subscribers and I hope that you all have a great day